Yeah, so moving the Blender UI back to its viewport. Um, it's the 2.8 project, it's coming. So we need to start somewhere. And of course, UI is always cool to talk about. So for this presentation, I'm going to ignore like the small tasks. And I would really like to have a look at the big picture because it definitely influences the small ones. So we have to look forward. Um, I'm kind of proposing a direction for the next years, probably, but we'll see. At first I'd like to define viewports in the terms of Blender because I think the viewport is a, viewports are a bit more than just the 3D view. I think I will just show you the, my definition of it in terms of Blender. Viewport is a region whose main purpose is direct content interaction. So that's also, that's not only the 3D view, but also the UE image editor or the VSE or whatever. So um, I don't think the node editor is one. I think it's a different kind of user interface. So having said that, you can just have a look at what's currently going on in the Blender user interface. I think it's pretty easy to describe roughly. We've got buttons everywhere. We've got shortcuts everywhere. And we've got a big mess. So, I, can't, I think this describes it pretty well. Welcome to Blender. <laughs> I think someone uh, already showed like, a similar image to describe the Blender UI like one, one year ago or two years, years ago. I don't remember. Wait, that's open source. I can just steal the same idea. Why is that? Um, I think that's an important, important question to ask. Why is that happening? Why do we have such a, such a mess in the user interface? You could say it's lazy devs, but I don't think so. I, I think the issue is a bit deeper. Um, it is a big problem in the kernel in the kernel of the UI. Not the code kernel, but in the core of the, of the design. The interface is built out of paradigms, but lacking an innovative vision. That's how I see the current user interface a bit. I mean, we're, we're sometimes a bit sloppy about the, about the paradigms, but I think it's more important that we have an innovative vision. Looking forward, or you could also call it like the golden thread or whatever. You could also call it the idea, an approach, whatever. It's fine. But I think innovative vision matches this, matches this um, pretty much. Paradigms are a bit more, I see them as a bit more long term. What I see a vision is more of a short term thing. Like Not really short term, it's still like can still take a couple of years to get a vision really working well in a user interface. But it's not that long term as paradigms. I mean, you can keep paradigms for 10 years, 15 years, and they may still be up to date. So we need a vision. And that's where the proposal comes. In this proposal, I would like to provide tools that move the locus of attention close to the user's content. It's not the focus, it's the locus. The focus is basically just one point, one pixel on the screen. The locus is a location, basically, a region, whatever. And we need to um, bring it closer to the user's content because it's, I mean, it's such a mess. We've got buttons everywhere. We could, we have this nice content, we have Suzanne's, we have our objects. We can just, why don't we just touch them? So, the task is to move the user interface back to the viewports. And at this point, I think I will just demo quickly something. Uh, nothing new, um, and cute creator just crashed. So uh, just master, a 
create this. This is not a create user interface. A create user interface would look more like like. Uh, no, there was there was a wrong key. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I like the terminal. It's fine. We can just keep in terminal terminal user interface. That's how I imagine a good user interface. Full screen, object, done. You know? And it's um, kind of like Sebastian currently works with his uh, stuff. We'll talk about it later again. So yeah, uh, I need to exit it again. It's not me. All right. I think there are some ongoing and already finished milestones to look at. And the first one is the viewport project, of course. The viewport project is kind of like a requirement for a viewport oriented user interface. Um, I mean, it, it doesn't bring much if we have super awesome viewport tools, but the viewport is shit as hell. So we need a good viewport. Also, it gives you a better feedback of what your final render will look like if you got a decent viewport or an awesome viewport even. I'm not gonna um, tell you much about the viewport project because it's, I'm not so involved with it. So I think that's it for the viewport project. I also think that Pi menus are a step in the right direction. I know that some of you really hate Pi's and that there are also buttons, but I think they are pretty cool to work with. And now I'm gonna tell you what I meant with Sebastian's workflow. Because he just, he has his Pi menus enabled. Quickly search for them. And enable them, come on. Then he goes to whatever, uh, usually the motion tracking thing. And then he goes into the full screen. And he has his pies and he works with them. And I find that, I think that's super awesome. Of course it's not perfect because there are still buttons, but it's definitely much better than, you know, like this. So I, I personally like pie menus and I think it's good that we have them. Um, go back. No. All right, go back. Come on. Uh, it's via the, via the internet, which is really slow currently. Anyway, I can, it's just, uh, no, it's fine. Good. So much better. Let's just. Oh, nice. So, the next big thing is last but not least the custom manipulators, the widget project. Um, I like to call it the custom man manipulators project because we also have buttons and scroll bars, which are also considered widgets. So it's kind of confusing. Um, what kind of widgets do we mean now? And yeah, so I call the widget project or the weekly widgets, I like to call them custom manipulators. I wrote a blog post about it. Um, good that I now have better internet. Or maybe not. Oh no! I hate computers! <laughs> Fuck you! I wrote a blog post about it um, on the code.banner.org uh, blog. Pretty basic stuff, pretty user oriented, um, orientated, so everyone can read it up, um, but not me. I think it's not the internet, I think the computer is completely sleeping, yes. 
okay to do anything. Anyway, I don't need it really. Um, I just wanted to demo it in a second, but that's fine. I can do this too in a moment. Let me just. Yeah, I know. Linux sometimes sucks. Usually not. I like it. Yeah, it's completely frozen. You can move the mouse and that's it. Yeah, I think I need a reboot. That's oh, quick, it's an SSD. So, I think I'm. So, the, the idea behind the widget project is that there are buttons which can just be displayed, um, which don't make much sense to have them as values because you can see what they are doing and you could basically do that in a much more intuitive way than just having ugly buttons. What's happening? It is buggy as hell. I can do the hard, the hard shit on. No, I got the, um, the widget branch checked out, so I wanted to demo the widget branch. It's okay, just a few seconds. <coughs> I can talk about widget. You can, yeah, right. I started the whole widget thing, so what is yes. the widget? So, shall I? A witch. Ah, we are already back. But it's giant. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, a widget is basically a visual representation of a value. Uh, that's one. So if, if people know uh, character riggers, they create little interfaces on top of their uh, characters. And it's important if you animate that you can uh, pose by moving your hands or moving a foot or moving the, the pelvis. So you make an interface inside of the viewport. And the widget project I started last year was to find out if we can make a, a generic toolkit for users uh, so that the users and developers can find tools inside of the viewport so that you don't need to uh, have a shortcuts, which is invisible, or menus, and crazy selections, that you can actually say, okay, I have a number of operations I want to do in the viewport, and I create visible clues in the viewport for it. Good. And now I can give it back to him. Yeah? Thank you You're very back? Much. Yeah? Okay. You saved my life. So, this is the blog post, um, which I was talking about. It's big oversized now. Yeah. Yes. So, it's, I should really mention that uh, I wasn't the only one working on this, so Ton, it was pretty much an idea from Ton and Anthony, I'm not gonna uh, pronounce, I'm not gonna say his last name, uh, <laughs> Ria Kiyotakis, yeah. So he started it, he did lots of hard work, um, but he was much too busy with Viewport and all the other projects, so um, I sort of wanted to help him with it. So, so the blog post is, post is also by him. Um, I'm going to be silly now and click on YouTube. Yeah, it's working. And you've seen that in the talk from uh, John the other day. That's how they work at DreamWorks, for example. You know, there, there is almost no user interface in between. It's, directly with the content. So much nicer. So, I'm now gonna, going to give you a demo of it. I mean, it's not that far the project. Uh, I wanted to, what's that? I wanted to um, work on them on such uh, rigging widgets or animation widgets, but didn't have the time yet. So I was working on a couple of other things. So the first thing you'll notice is the, the new manipulator, which I find really cool. It's got some new features, like mouse hover highlighting. Can you see it some here? Yeah. It's pretty subtle, but it's, I think it's fun. And you got, it doesn't disappear if you do something. There's this little gray thing in the middle, which stays there. 
and you've got those planar, planar transformations, which is also pretty cool. Um, yeah, of course, rotation is working exactly the same. It's not, I don't think it's really finished. I think we can do some more fancy stuff with it. But it's getting somewhere. So that's the transformer manipulator. There's also the, some camera widgets. For example, you can, um, you can now just take the camera and do this, which is much more nicer, in my opinion. And you've also got the, the depth of field widgets, widget. It is so much better. And you, we got a spot size widget. Quickly do this. I should probably use the manipulator widget to scale it up. But um, so this is now spot lamp, obviously, and you can just to such things right from the viewport without buttons. Who needs buttons? Question? Yes, sure. You, you direct uh, the camera at the uh, rectangle to make the zoom. Yes. Why do you make it not consistent also with the cone of the uh, light source to directly... Yes, yes, right. Uh, it's basically proof of concept. Um, so it's, I think we can do that a bit better. Um, we talked about it yesterday, Jonathan, Paolo, and myself. Um, would be better to have a cone for it, but uh, and an arrow, for example, for the strength. But we'll see. It's kind of detailed, kind of detailed. So we can look at that later. Um, what else do we have? We've got a yeah, small one. The um, the force field wind widget, and now arrows. Arrows everywhere, especially if I do this. Arrows, arrows, arrows. And you can just, just the force field. Um, Gottfried, because I don't know where he is. Gottfried Hoffmann? Where he is? Not here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, hold on. Where he is? <laughs> he wanted to come. Oh. Now I'm disappointed. Anyway, um, we've also got, um, for the graph editor, Something that has been requested, so I just added it at some point. Come on. I hate laptops, by the way, and computers. Um, so you can just go to the dope sheet, uh, to the graph editor, enable a backdrop, and then you have this backdrop. If I add animation to it, then like somewhere. Uh, really stupid, come on. So yeah, you have this instant feedback. It so yeah, this is kind of cool, and of course you can you can freely you can press W at the moment. The shortcuts, of course, will change. Then you can just resize it and move around, whatever. Same for the for the uh, compositing background, but it's kind of glitchy, so I won't demo it. Yeah, it's also in the for the overdrop or backdrop in master for the sequence editor. Yes, sure. Uh, just a short question. You just demonstrated that we can actually move the background in uh, the, the linear editor. Yes. Um, is, are there any plans of uh, on doing that for the for the viewport backgrounds as well? Sure, why not? I mean, it's basically the same thing, just in 3D. <laughs> no, it's totally possible. Yeah. Right. 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 Yes. So that Really, that's totally totally possible. So yeah, um, just to show you that I'm not lying to you, it's also here. Um, so I think that's it for the uh, widget demo. Yeah, pretty much. All right. So there are also face map widgets, which are not that nice working yet. Face maps are basically groups of phases, so like vertex groups. And it's, uh, the plan is to make them, to turn them into something like you can see in this, 
in this video. When you hover them, you get some feedback and there the faces get highlighted and you can do whatever you like. So, so, it's working. <laughs> I think instead of having buttons everywhere, shortcuts everywhere, and mess everywhere, it's really time that we think forward and um, look for some other solutions like viewport project, pies, widget project, get them done somehow. And then we've, at some point we'll have not this stuff anymore, then we have finally objects, then we have Susan's area, which I think nobody, nobody can resist having Susan area. All right, I think that's it. Any questions? What goes into creating a custom manipulator? So, I mean, you've mentioned that, uh, I know in the past that there's the plan to have the complete Python API for it, and then also to have a series of supported widgets just by default. Right. So, I mean, if, if, a, if a user wants to create a custom widget, whether it's for a rig, for a custom modeling tool or whatever, what goes into that? Is that strictly Python scripting or? Um, there's a basic Python API. I don't think it's working anymore because uh, code has quite changed, but uh, the idea is to have a really easy Python API for it. And I think we could even allow users to create some widgets without any scripting, should be possible, but it's difficult. Yeah, ma yeah, exactly. Um, the current idea is that you just model some shape, export it, and then you can use, you can, um, use the data that you just exported from a Python script. So might be possible to also do that without any scripting at all. Yep. Um, talking, yes. talking about widgets, um, what about uh, moving animation parts or motion parts? I don't know how they call them. Oh, better, yeah. uh, um, for keyframes. Yeah, um, Anthony was working on it, but it, I think it's a big issue with uh, the dependency graph. So I don't know the exact the exact status of it, but it's, I think it's pretty difficult, but possible, of course. <laughs> I mean, we got a new awesome dependency graph. Right, Sergey? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well. I didn't right, one it. more here uh, in, in the corner. Um, so we've seen some custom up updates and work there as well, and, and Tom was mentioning also more natural interfaces. How do you see this moving forward in terms of evolving an interface that is usable, you know, both from this keyboard mouse concept and, in fact, uh, the tablet style that you showed there was also still, you know, using basically a stylus as a sort of a mouse. So moving forward to that, to you know, more more intuitive interfaces like touch or yes. or anything else that that might be there, so yes. that the two are somehow living together, so that we don't need to create a, a wall that you know mouse and keyboard users yes. and mean, then something else. So you mean that it integrates nicely with tablets and stuff? Right. Yeah, yeah. I think that's totally possible. Um, it's um, it's not really that related to widget directly. It's more of supporting tablets in general, nice. And then they also work with widgets, fine. Right, right. Uh, asking just because. So I don't know if you uh, you have seen a Sprout, uh, H Sprout by HP. So it is a device that has a, a touch mat basically down. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's another screen, a projective screen, and then of course it's far more natural to use hands there. Right. But you would still retain the vertical screen, which is a classic kind of pointing device, yeah. which would you use on the boundary interface. Yeah. If you haven't, there is one upstairs, or will be set up oh, shortly. Oh, I check it out, so, of course. So, so Great. then I can ask more questions. Great. Um, what about feedback? I mean, in the interface now, there are not only buttons, there are also feedback. So if you don't have nothing, how I would know where is my cube, how is thick, uh, how is big, and uh, all the feedback that you have back yes. that are not buttons. Yes. I mean, a big goal of the, um, of the widgets or the custom manip manipulators 
Ah, it is feedback. So I think that's already improving pretty much. But feedback in Blender in the user interface can be improved in general. I think we maybe we'll talk tomorrow about it a bit here. So yeah, which should help a lot, I think, but it still can be improved, of course. Anyone else? Yes. Thank you. Uh, I suppose there's two parts. Uh, will there be a visual cue or visual feedback to, uh, like, similarly to what you were just talking about, to uh, show things like uh, the precision, like at the moment it's shift to do precision movement. Uh, will there be a visual cue to uh, control the granularity of uh, precision oh, yeah. movement? Yeah, I plan to do that. Um, I did some changes in the key map so you can basically for each widget group, uh, the individual widgets are grouped, like for the manipulator, we've got for each axis, we've got one widget and they are grouped together to be the manipulator. So, um, and you can set custom key maps for each widget group. I did that like two, two weeks ago or so. So, stuff like that will be possible and you can expand that to do things like precision tracking or even number input. Yep. Fant fantastic, and I hope I, I love the look of the new widgets. I think they look brilliant. Um, Sorry, I love the look. Uh, it, yeah. it looks fantastic. Yeah, and I put some effort into it and, and making it somehow <laughs> look appealing. I just uh, I hope there'll be a way as well to switch between the widgets without having to move your mouse out of the viewport. So um, yeah, 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 right. Should also be somehow doable. We'll see. Thank you. No problem. At all. Sorry. Oh yeah, yeah, right. right. So we are thinking about having a uh, global key for uh, widgets in the entire in the entire interface. But really, that's key map related. Yeah, one more question, maybe. It's okay. Um, with the uh, graph editor and the, the keyframe editor, um, is there any chance that there'll actually be some visual feedback on keyframe types? Because obviously, you can still change uh, the way a keyframe displays by hitting R and changing it. But it'd be really, really great if, I mean, in my opinion, if you had a constant interpolated keyframe or, you know, uh, a Bezier keyframe, they display slightly differently. So when you're looking at it, it's not just a block of yellow squares. You can actually see maybe a little more of what, about what's happening in, in those modes. So I was just wondering if that's something which is actually possible. I know they use something similar in After Effects, and I suppose because I started there, it's something I miss, but uh, it might just be me. But yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's of course possible. Uh, I mean, it's Blender, uh, you know, everything's possible. But um, yeah, I don't think it's that related to the widget project, maybe. maybe.